Welcome to the series Indian Polity by M. Lakshmikant. This would be our lecture number 17 and the agenda of this particular lecture is let us try to take a moment and try to revise the topic that you have already discussed in the last 4-5 lectures that is a historical background. As to how the legislation that has been passed by the British Parliament over a period of time and gradually and slowly and what kind of constitutional changes has been brought in in the way that they administered India and how these constitutional reforms over a period of time influenced the Indian constitution which was drafted by the constant assembly and that is how we have dealt this particular topic historical background. Now this class is to revise whatever we have learnt because in the historical background we have seen that uh, the British has ruled India in at least two eras one is the company rule and other is the crown rule. And the crown rule starting from 1773 till the year 1857 and then from 1858 after the revolt of 1857, 1858 the government of India Act 1858 was passed and from the government of India Act the administration of British India was directly taken up by the British crown and then subsequently it came to an end by the Indian Independence Act 1947. In the last lecture, we have discussed the Government of India Act 1935 and the Indian Independence Act. So, now let us take a moment and let us try to revise everything that you have learned by solving the questions, the practice questions. So, let us directly get into the practice questions and we will try to recollect whatever you have learned right from the Regulating Act of 1773 and till the Indian Independence Act 1947, which as I already said were divided into two phases, one is the company rule and other is the crown rule and there are important events that has happened, especially to the councils act where they have been trying to bring a lot of reforms in the council and then the important legislations being the government of India Act 1919 and the government of India Act 1935 and also the reforms that has been brought during the company rule that is the regulating acts and the charter acts. So, I will try to quickly revise all those things and we will revise these things in the form of the practice questions. So, that is the agenda for this particular class. Come to the first question, which one of the following act transferred the authority of authority to British rule from the East India Company to the crown directly and this we have read very clearly that the company rule was from the year 1773 till the year 1857, 1857 there was a Sipai mutiny. And that was an opportunity for the British Parliament to make a law and thereby transfer the administration of British India directly into the British Crown. And that was done by passing off the Government of India Act 1858. And by passing Government of India Act 1858, they brought in certain new authorities like the Secretary of State. And then the Governor General of India was renamed as the Viceroy. And the Viceroy would report to the Secretary of State. And the Secretary of State is a member of the British Cabinet and he is ultimately responsible to the British Parliament, okay. So, the right answer in this particular case is statement C. Come to question number 2, consider the following statements, the Secretary of State, Viceroy, Portfolio, which of the above were brought into effect by the Government of India Act 1858. So, we have seen that the 1858 Act which directly brought the British administration under the control of the British Government. So, this is something that you have seen. And if you see what are the changes that was brought in by the Government of India Act 1858, we have seen that it has introduced the Secretary of State and the Secretary of State would now carry out the administration of the Indian Affairs with a council, an advisory council, a 15 member council that is given to him. But because he is a member in the British cabinet, he will be there in Britain itself. But on behalf of the Secretary of State, somebody who is present in India, that is none other than the Viceroy. So the Viceroy was there in India who would carry out the administration. And this portfolio system is nothing but that every person in the Viceroy Council will be assigned certain responsibilities of ministries and departments so that the functioning of the government can become more efficient. It is similar to that of the system of cabinet in our country right now. But this portfolio system was not part of the Government of India Act 1858 because the question is asking which of the above were brought into effect by the Government of India Act 1858. Now, the portfolio system was not brought in by the Government of India Act 1858. The portfolio system was brought in by the Indian Councils Act 1861 by Lord Canning when he was the Viceroy of India. So, which of the statements given above is are correct? So, 
statement 3 is wrong so you can eliminate these two things and anyways the right answer is option 1 and 2 so the answer is option c let's move to the next question which of the following legislations passed by the british parliament to govern india was considered as an act of good governance so which one of the following legislations passed by the british parliament to govern India was considered as an act of good governance. So, the answer for this particular question is uh, the Government of India Act 1858 was considered to be an act of good governance. In fact, uh, the very idea of transferring the administration from the British, uh, from the East India Company to the British uh, Crown directly is to ensure certain elements of good administration in our country. And that has happened through passing the Government of India Act 1858. So, it is also called as an act of good governance. Try to remember this. It may be asked in the examination. Next question. Which one of the following act was introduced? The portfolio system in India and who introduced it? So, this is what we have been discussing. What basically is the portfolio system? So, the Viceroy Executive Council, we know that the Viceroy had an Executive Council. And then he also had a legislative council, but the Viceroy Executive Council had certain members as a part of it. So, every member will be assigned a certain responsibility of certain departments. So, home will be under certain department, defense will be under certain uh, minister, member, and then finance will be under a particular member. So, this is what is the uh, portfolio system. But this portfolio system for the first time was introduced by the Indian Councils Act. And it was introduced by Lord Canning. So, that is the right answer. The right answer is option D. And what is the advantage of this portfolio system? It has made the system of uh, government very easy. Before that, the entire government function has to be taken care of by all the members in the Viceroy Council, which was a very complex process. So, now they have streamlined it. Now, in fact, today we follow the portfolio system in our country and we can see the genesis of this portfolio system has been coming from the Indian Councils Act. Next question, which act provided for the appointment of an Indian into the Viceroy's Executive Council for the first time? When was an Indian appointed to the Viceroy Executive Council? Now, starting 1861, please understand, there was a lot of reforms that was made to the Legislative Council. In fact, the Indians were started participating in the Legislative Council much earlier. So, Legislative Council means similar to that of the Parliament. But Executive Council means it is similar to that of the Ministers. But the Indians were not part of the Viceroy's Executive Council for a long period of time, although the reforms have started happening in the Legislative Council, starting the Indian Councils Act 1861 and then subsequently the function of the Council, the Legislative Council expanded and their functions also improved in 1892 and then in 1909. But an Indian member was made part of the Viceroy's Executive Council for the first time only in the Indian Council Act 1909. First time in the Indian Councils Act 1909, Satyendra Prasad Sinha was the first person to be appointed in the Viceroy's Executive Council. So, Satyendra Prasad Sinha was, was given the portfolio of law. He was made as a law member for the first time and that is when an Indian was made part of the Viceroy's Executive Council. So, the right answer in this particular case is option C. Come to next question. The concept of indirect election was brought into, brought in for the first time by British India. Under uh, which year or under which legislation this, uh, the concept of indirect election was brought in for the first time? If you see the concept of uh, direct election, in, sorry, indirect election, it was brought in, in for the first time in British India by the Indian Council Act 1892, although please understand, although it has brought in a system of indirect election, where the members of the legislative councils in the union legislature can be appointed from the provinces. The members of the provincial legislative council had the power to elect. But however, uh, you see that uh, the British government wanted to eliminate and they wanted to put in, they do not want to put in this particular word and they made a clever uh, uh, thought that this particular word should never, uh, uh, should have a mention in the Indian Councils Act 1892. And that is the reason that they have chosen the word nomination instead of the word direct election and hence other so indirect elections and hence the mention of the word election was not there. Instead of that, they have chosen the word nomination. But then the principle of indirect election 
for the first time was brought in British India by the Indian Council Act 1892. But if you will ask me whether there is a mention of this particular word, it was not mentioned in the act. Come to question number 7. Which one of the following is true with regard to the powers given to the Legislative Council under the Indian Council Act 1892? So, that means uh, we have seen that the very objective of the Legislative Council is Legislative Council Acts, the Indian Councils Act, it is to increase the composition and function of these councils. Now, the question is uh, which of the following were part of the Indian Council Act 1892? Statement 1. The council had power to discuss budget. So, did not did they have the power to discuss the budget? Yes, of course, they had the power to discuss the budget. Statement 2, to raise questions on matters of urgent public importance. Did they have the uh, power to raise questions on matters of urgent public importance? That was also given to them, which was not there in the previous version of that. But what was not there, the power which is given to the members is that they were not given the powers to ask supplementary questions. Supplementary questions means if they ask a question and if there is an answer to that particular question, can they ask another question which is a follow up question of the answer that they have given? That is not possible. And in fact, this power was given to them by the Indian Councils Act 1909. So, before that, they are not having the power to ask the supplementary question, but otherwise, they had the power to discuss the budget, they had the power to ask question. That is, the members of the Legislative Council can question the ministers. The members of the council can question the members of the executive council. So, that is very much possible. So, which of the statements given above is are correct? It is only 1 and 2 only. Come to the next question that is question number 8. Which one of the following is true with regard to powers given to the legislative council under the Indian Council Act 1892? So, which of the following is true with regard to the Indian Council Act? So, the same question has been repeated. So, let me just skip this particular question because I think that is the same question. So, let me just move on to the next question. Question number 9. The system of separate electorate was introduced for the first time by. So, when was the system of separate electorate was introduced for the first time? In fact, we know that separate electorate system means people belonging to a particular community can only elect the members from that particular community which is right now for not followed in our country. We do not follow the communal uh, system or the communal electorate. In fact, this was part of the British's policy of divide and rule. And in fact, it was introduced for the first time by the Indian Councils Act 1909. And at that point of time, it was Lord Marley who was the Secretary of State and Minto was the Viceroy. And that is the reason Lord Minto also came to be called as the father of communal electorate in our country. So, the right answer for this particular question is option B. Come to the next question. Which one of the following is true regarding the Indian Council Act 1909? So, what is true with regard to the Indian Council Act 1909? Statement 1. The act for the first time provided for the appointment of an Indian member in the Viceroy's Executive Council. Is that true? The act for the first time provided for the appointment of an uh, Indian member in the Viceroy Executive Council. This is very much true. We have seen the Satyendra Prasad Singha was the first person to be uh, appointed into the Viceroy Executive Council and in fact, he was appointed as a law member. So, this is a right statement. Statement 2, the act allowed non-official majority in the Legislative Council both at the centre and the provinces. The act allowed non-official majority in the Legislative Council in both centre and the provinces. In fact, the Councils Act, the idea is over a period of time, the membership of the members, the composition of the members in the Legislative Councils kept on increasing. But however, did they have non-official majority in both the Legislative Councils in the centre as well as the state? So, this is not true. Yes, of course, under the Government of India Act 1909, uh, uh, they had non-official majority in the provinces, the Legislative Council in the provinces but not non-official majority in the central legislature. In the central legislature, still there was official majority. Official majority means the members who are part of the executive council and the other officials of the government were more in the legislative council than the non-officials, so not part of the government. So, this particular statement is wrong. The members of the legislative councils were allowed to ask supplementary questions, yes. So, in 1892, they were not allowed to ask. But in 1909 Indian Council Act, this power was given to the members of the Legislative Council. Choose the correct answers from the quotes given below. So, the right answer in this particular case 
So option 2 is not the right answer. So the right answer would be option 1 and 3 only. So option C is the right answer. Come to the next question. The system of diarchy which was introduced by the British Parliament. The system of diarchy was introduced in British Parliament. Uh, Br sorry, the system of diarchy was introduced in British India by. So what exactly is the system of diarchy? So diarchy was for the first time introduced by the government of India in 1919. And the diarchy was introduced in the provinces. And what is the meaning of this particular diarchy? So diarchy means that the departments or the government functions were divided into two types. Or uh, the subject matter of the government uh, is divided into two types. One is the reserved subjects, and other is the transferred subjects. And the reserved subjects will be carried out by the viceroy executive council members. The executive council members of the governor in case of provinces. So, they would carry out the reserved subjects and the transferred subjects were given to administered by the responsible ministers. The responsible ministers would carry out the administration of these areas. And uh, how they have distributed these items, how they have divided as to what is a reserved item and what is a transferred item. Reserved item is uh, the subject matters, the areas which is very important for the British government. And the transfer items is not very important for them. Say, for example, education, health, and all those things. Here it is matters of revenue, finance, all those things are reserved items. So, when was a system of diarchy introduced, which is an ultimate failure, which was introduced in the government of India in 1919? In fact, because it was a failure, the commission, the Simon Commission, which was appointed to study the functioning of this government of India in 1919, suggested to the British government that you do away with this diarchy. And that is why uh, the following act, the government of India 1935, when they came, that they have done away with the system of diarchy in the provinces. Come to the next question. Who was considered to be the father of communal electorate in India? So, who is considered to be the father of communal electorate? I categorically said that it was Lord Minto, because it was during the Morley Minto reforms, or you can say the Indian Councils Act 1909. For the first time, the communal electorate was introduced. And what is communal electorate? So, communal electorate is a principle which was followed by the Britishers that would allow only a particular voters belonging to a particular community to elect the leaders from that particular community. And people from other community cannot vote and elect the members for that particular community. So, that is basically what is called as communal electorate. In fact, they initiated this communal electorate in 1909. 1909 and then subsequently they expanded and extended the system of communal electorate uh, in the government of India 1919 and in the government of India 1935 which basically was not very good uh, for the country but the Britishers used that as a part of their dividend rule policy which has been completely eliminated and it is no longer part of the system in our country after India became independent and when they drafted their own constitution. So the answer in this particular case is option B. Come to the next question, which one of the following act introduced the system of direct election for the first time in British India? So when was the system of direct election? So please understand the indirect election was uh, in one form or the other was introduced in the Indian Council Act 1892 and the indirect election was further extended by the Indian Council Act 1909. But for the first time, the direct election was introduced with a limited franchise was only in the government of India Act 1919. In fact, most of the members in the Legislative Council, both at the, the Union Legislature as well as at the Provincial Legislature, they were elected by direct election. They were elected by direct election, but limited franchise. It is not that everyone was uh, given the right to vote. Only very limited uh, people were having the right to vote and they were given voting rights depending upon the various factors like their ability to pay taxes, their property and all those things, their status and all those things, they were given the right to vote. So the right answer is the Government of India Act 1990. Come to next question, which one of the following is or the feature of the Government of India Act 1919? So basically we should know what is part of the Government of India Act 1919. Bicameralism in the central legislature. So bicameralism means having two houses. 
the government of india act 1919 provided for bicameralism in the central legislature but not in the provinces so this is very very important bicameralism become a feature of provinces only in the government of india act 1935 but in 1919 it was part of the central legislature they had two houses one is the council of state and other is the central legislative assembly so both were part of the central legislature direct election with limited franchise so this is true for the first time the direct election was introduced with limited franchise extension of the principle of communal electorate so this is also true in the 1909 that is in the indian council act the communal electorate system was introduced by lord minto when lord minto introduced this particular system he introduced that only to the muslims in our country but then subsequently it was extended to the other communities like the indian christians the anglo indians the europeans to the sikhs and to other categories so, so to these categories of people it was extended by the government of india act 1919 so this is also true so choose the correct answer from the quotes given below the answer is all of the above that is option d come to the next question consider the following statements statement 1 first step taken by british parliament to regulate the affairs of east india company statement 2 the governor of bengal was designated as the governor general of bengal so which of the fall, which of the statements given above is are true regarding the regulating act of 1773 so probably you'll have to keep in mind the regulating act of 1773 and then we'll have to go and read the statements it was a first step taken by the british parliament to regulate the affairs of the east india company this is true before that the east india company was never regulated by the british parliament the east india company was given the rights by queen elizabeth 2 and uh, they have been ruling sorry they have been uh, having the commercial rights to trade with india for a long period of time but then east india company tried to assert its position as a territorial authority after the battle of buxar in 1765 which happened after the battle of plassey and then subsequently there was a lot of misadministration which the british parliament realized and for the first time uh, act was enacted by the british parliament uh, based on the recommendation which is given by a parliamentary committee and that act came to be known as the regulating act of 1773 and in fact the regulating act of 1773 is the first uh, legislation passed by the british parliament to regulate the affairs of east india company statement 2 the governor of bengal was designated as the governor general of bengal is it true yes of course it is also true the governor of bengal was designated as the governor general of bengal and the first person to become the governor general of bengal was lord william bentick so this statement is also true which of the statements given above is are true regarding the regulating act of 1773 so the right answer would be option c that is both 1 and 2 come to the next question which of the following act was passed to bring in more efficiency in administration of east india company during the era of company rule now the very act of regulating act 1773 was brought in to make sure that uh, there is not much of mal administration with the east india company but however the right answer for this particular question please understand it is a pitts india act 1784 pitts the younger who is considered to be the youngest prime minister of britain in the history of britain and he was looking into the affairs of east india company he thought that there is a complete misadministration and mal administration that is happening in east india company because everything is done by the court of directors the court of directors are nothing but the company directors and these company directors are looking into the commercial functions also they are looking into the administrative functions of the army the military uh, the revenue and all those things in the british india he thought that this is not the system that it has to be and to make it more efficient he demarcated the function between the court of directors and the board of control so for the first time a new body of authority was created that is board of control board of control and then earlier authority was the court of directors so what has happened after the pitts india act 1784 now it will be the board of control who will take care of the administrative affairs so they will take care of the administrative affairs and the court of directors will take care of what the court of directors will take care of the the, the they will take care of the commercial activities
they will take care of the commercial activities. So, for the first time to bring in more efficiency, it was uh, the idea of the youngest Prime Minister then of Britain to bring in this Pitts India Act. Okay. So, the Pitts India Act was enacted by the Britishers to bring in more efficiency. Come to the next question. The East India Company monopoly to carry out carry its commercial activities in India was brought to an end by it was a Charter Act of 1833 that brought the monopoly activities of East India Company to an end. And for the first time, the British Parliament categorically said, so henceforth the company monopoly was not, sorry, it is asking, the question is asking the East India Company's monopoly to carry its commercial activities was brought to an end. In fact, the monopoly was brought to an end by the Charter Act of 1813, a small correction. The monopoly of East India Company was brought to an end by Charter India 1813. The commercial activities were brought to an end by the Charter Act of 1833. So, henceforth, they will not have any commercial activities. They will only a purely administrative authority. So, when was the monopoly was brought to an end? The monopoly was brought to an end by the Charter Act of 1833. Although they still continue to have monopoly over trade with tea in India and trade with China. Otherwise, their monopoly to trade with India was brought to an end by the Charter Act of 1830. Federalism was introduced for the first time in British India by. So, this is a very simple question. It was introduced by the Government of India Act 1935. This is for the first time that the power has been distributed between the provinces and the center and then three items were created that is a provincial list, then you have the concurrent list and the federal list. But do not confuse that the government of India Act 1919 do provide for demarcation of subjects, but that is not through a statutory backing in the law that was only through the devolution or by the delegation which is can be done by the central authority. So, for the first time the federalism was brought in only by the government of India Act 1935. Which one of the following is not true regarding the Indian Independence Act 1947? Statement 1, creation of two dominion states. So, in fact, this is true that it has created two dominion states. The princely states had an option to join either India or Pakistan but can't remain an independent state. In fact, this is not true. They can either join India, they can join the uh, Pakistan or they can also remain an independent state made constant assembly of India a sovereign body. So, in fact, uh, this is also true. It, it made the constant assembly of India a sovereign body to create the constitution as it wish. So, none of the above cannot be true because we have an incorrect option. So, the right answer is option B. Come to the next question. Consider the following statements. One, abolition of diarchy in provinces, bicameralism in the provincial legislature. Which of the following is true regarding the government of India Act 1935? So, it has to be seen with regard to the government of India Act 1935, abolition of diarchy in provinces was recommended by the Simon Commission. So, based on which this was brought in. So, definitely this is true. Yes, there is abolition of diarchy. Bicameralism in provincial, provincial legislature, that is also true. So, there was bicameralism in provincial legislature. And please understand bicameralism in the central legislature was brought in by the government of India Act 1919. And the bicameralism in the provincial legislature was brought in by the government of India Act 1935. So, both are true. The right answer would be both 1 and 2. Come to the next question. According to the Indian independence, who will be the head of the independent state? So, the Indian Independence Act 1947 made it very clear the head of the state would be the Governor General of India. And for every state, there will be a governor who will be the head of the state, but they would continue to be a constitutional head. And this head of the state will be appointed by the British Crown on the aid and advice of the Dominion Council of Ministers. So, who would be the right answer in this case? It is the uh, Governor General of India and there was no Secretary of State or the, for that matter no Viceroy under the Indian Independence Act 1947. Which one of the following was appointed to study the effectiveness of Government of India Act 1919? When the Government of India Act 1919 was passed, they made sure that after 10 years there will be a commission to study the functioning of or how effective has been the constitutional reforms brought, brought in by the government of India Act 1919. And to that extent, in the year 1927, a commission that was appointed, that is none but the Simon Commission. In fact, it is a Simon Commission based on which the government of India Act 1935 was passed, based on the report that is given by the Simon Commission to the British government. 
the British government held round table conferences with the uh, Indian representatives and simultaneously based on the input the Indian uh, based on the input the government of in, uh, the government of India 1935 was passed. So, the right answer is option B. So, the idea of this particular session is to help you revise all the uh, things from the historical background topic. Uh, please do watch these uh, topic after revising the subjects which will definitely help you. And with this we will wind up this particular session. In the next session we will start up with the new topic that is the preamble to the constitution of India. Thanks for watching. All the very best. God bless.